Okay, class, what we're talking about now, autonomic nervous system neurotransmitters. Autonomic nervous system neurotransmitters. Okay, let's see what we got. Cholinergic fibers, that's acetylcholine fibers, release the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. All autonomic nervous system pre, see right there, pre-ganglion fibers secrete acetylcholine. All parasympathetic post do. For the adrenergic, which is adrenaline, they release the neurotransmitter norepinephrine. Now, let's just go down here for a moment, talk on norepinephrine just for a second. Okay, norepinephrine was made from tyrosine. Tyrosine is amino acid, and if you may recall in my chemistry section, it could go to dope if you have the right enzyme. Now, if you have the, another enzyme, it may take it to melanin. But also, if the, depending on the enzyme, you may take dopa to dopamine. Dopamine is the Parkinson's uh, neurotransmitter, if, you don't, if, you, if you're lacking. That was in the substantia nigra of the brain. Dopamine with the right enzyme can be converted to norepinephrine, right here. Where would that enzyme be located? In the postganglionic post fibers of the sympathetic nervous system. The postganglionic fibers of the sympathetic nervous system. Now, if you add a methyl group, you have the enzyme, it can become epinephrine. We just talked about that. Epinephrine comes from the adrenal medulla. Because it comes from an adrenal gland in England, they call this adrenaline, and they call this noradrenaline. They both work similar, so I wanted to point that out. So, But most sympathetic postganglionic fibers, not, not, all, not all of them, but most, pre, most postganglionic, most sympathetic postganglionic axons secrete norepinephrine. Secrete norepinephrine. You see right here. But some don't. So I come here. So right here, sympathetic, most secrete norepinephrine, but some secrete acetylcholine. And I'm going to change this. And so what is called, those that do that, are called the cholinergic adrenergics. Let me say that again. The cholinergic adrenergics. Because they, the, it's the adrenaline nervous system, but it's secreting acetylcholine. So most do this, but the exception are those that go to sweat glands and some blood vessels and skeletal muscles will secrete acetylcholine. Okay. But all parasympathetic secrete acetylcholine, and all preganglionic secrete uh, that. Okay. Now, we go a little further. <clears throat> so that's that there. Okay, receptors. Now, before we in introduce receptors, I'm going to go down here. And if you may recall, receptors have specificity and affinity. Let's 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 put that there on here. So receptors have what? Have specificity and affinity for the ligand. We brought this up heavily. A lichen is any substance that can bond to a receptor. So they have specificity for the molecular shape and affinity. All right. Now, however, when it comes to a neurotransmitter, the same neurotransmitter substance X, I'm just using a generic, has totally different effects in two cells based on the cell's chemical action of the receptor. So this cell and this cell both respond to X. They, they have specificity and affinity. But X, let's say in this one, turns it on, and X on that receptor turns it off. So the receptors make as much difference as the hormone, as the uh, neurotransmitters do. Okay? Just want to point that out. All right. The same neurotransmitter on one cell can operate totally different on another cell. Okay, so receptors for neurotransmitters, the cholinergic receptors for acetylcholine and the adrenergic receptors for norepinephrine. OK, 
okay? The cholinergic receptors, these are something I want you to definitely remember, there are two kinds, the nicotinic and the muscarinic. The nicotinic and the muscarinic. The nicotinic are called nicotinic because they will, because acetylcholine can turn them on, but nicotinic acid can turn them on. The muscarinic are called muscarinic because acetylcholine can turn them on, but also an extract from the mushroom known as muscarine can turn them on. So nicotinic and muscarinic, and they are at different locations. All ganglionic neurons, okay, so really pre-ganglionic, right here. All pre are using nicotinic receptors. See, all are using nicotinic receptors. Okay. All parasympathetic target organs are using muscarinic. Using muscarinic. Okay, so muscarinic then would be on these target organs. But however, it would also be on the target organs of the, of the adrenergic cholinergics. See right here, e ecrine sweat glands. Remember the ecrine sweat glands? Those are the kind that do not bust apart. Remember we had holocrine, ecrine, and apocrine. I'm just bringing stuff back up. And blood vessels and skeletal muscles. Because I want to dilate those blood vessels and skeletal muscles. Okay. All right. So named after the drugs that can bind to them that would mimic nicotinic acid and muscarine. Okay, we go further. So the nicotinic are found on motor end plates of skeletal muscle. Remember now, acetylcholine is the one for skeletal muscle. Remember, that's the somatic, though. That's the somatic nervous system, which I don't have here. But the somatic motor nervous system uses also uses acetylcholine, and the receptor for it is nicotinic. The receptor for it is nicotinic. And all gang preganglionic fiber, you know, all postganglionic neurons, nicotinic. Okay? Hormone producing cells in the adrenal medulla. Because remember, the preganglionic synapses directly on the chromophid cells. Effect of acetylcholine on nicotinic is always stimulatory. EPSP type of thing. EPSP, excitatory postsynaptic potential. Muscarinic, all effect is stimulated by postganglionic cholinergic. The effect can be inhibitory or what? Excitatory. We back to what I was talking about. So you got the same receptors, but the effect could be stimulatory. See, back to this picture. Back to this picture. Same neurotransmitter. So for example, so for example, let's talk about it. We've said it before. Acetylcholine on the heart will slow it down. On the heart, you still would have what? Muscarinic receptor. On the heart. What would you have? Muscarinic receptor. On the heart. But on the heart, on the intestine, the same re a muscarinic receptor would increase activity. Increase. So the same neurotransmitter on both. Where's the difference coming? Even though it's the same receptor type, the way the receptor works, the way it turns on the cell. Same receptor type, same neurotransmitter. So it depends on the target arc and how it would work based on the cellular reaction to that neurotransmitter. Okay, we already saw that. Adrenergic which would be norepinephrine and epinephrine, we have what we call alpha and beta. Alpha and beta. But in this case, there are subtypes. See, nicotinic and muscarinic didn't have subtypes. But in this case, it's subtypes. Alpha 1s, alpha 2, beta 1s. Like beta 1 is on the heart. Beta blocker would slow the heart down. So we'll be talking about a lot of this in A and P too. 
But I want you to remember that for acetyl, I mean for norepinephrine and epinephrine, alpha and beta. And it depends on the subclass as to where things are located. Okay, that's that drawing. Okay, now we're talking about effects of some of the drugs that you have. Atropine is anticholinergic. It blocks muscarinic receptors. Okay, so just so here's here's the deal. If I'm going to, if you if I'm if I'm writing an order, you know, that's an OBGYN to do surgery on a female, I want to dry up her salivary secretion so she doesn't aspirate. So generally what we'll do, is we'll write and write the nurse to inject right before they wheel them down to the down to the operating room to give 0 0.4 atropine and then to give a little demerol and fenugrin. Demerol because you want to make the person a little sleepy so they don't fight the anesthesia and demerol and morphine both for nausea, a little fenugrin anti-nausea. Neostigmine inhibits acetylcholinesterase used in this condition called myasthenia gravis. Okay, acetylcholinesterase breaks down acetylcholine to acetate and choline. Now let me just kind of explain real quickly on myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis is a muscle weakening, muscle weakening condition, particularly in skeletal muscle, muscle weakening. You start having droopy eyelids and it goes down. I had a patient come in my office years ago like this. So we can give neostigmine. Now, what, now the, the condition is due to an autoimmune reaction on some of the receptors, okay? Some of the receptors for acetylcholine. So it's an autoimmune condition. They get attacked. Well, if I, if I in, have more acetylcholine around, the receptors that are available will get activated better. So if I give an enzyme, if I give us a, a chemical or drug that can inhibit the breakdown product of acetylcholine, more acetylcholine will stay around. Okay. Effects of drugs. Over-the-counter drugs, cold allergies, and they stimulate alpha adrenergic receptors. Now, let me tell you. Okay. Nasal congestion. In your nose, you got a mucous membrane. Underneath the mucous membrane are blood vessels. Now you got mucus on top, and then you got some blood vessels underneath in the dermis, underneath the, the, ep, the uh, epithelial layer. So what is nasal congestion? You get histamine, which is a vasodilate, inflammatory. The histamine dilates the blood vessels in this nose. Think about it's a circular container there, right? So when the blood vessels dilate, they push the epithelia forward, so it so it meets on the other sides. And then the mucus finishes the job, so it, so your nasal passage gets narrower. So what happens if I give something that can vasoconstrict? The alpha receptors are on blood vessels. Alpha receptors generally vasoconstrict. If they vasoconstrict, they're gonna pull that mucosa back, and therefore you can open up the air passages. Now, however, when we get into ANP two and I talk about blood pressure. When you vasoconstrict the blood vessel, the pressure can go up. So for people with hypertension, you may go up. That's why they'll say consult your physician before you take some of these. A beta blocker can come in and attach to, to, uh, beta, it could attach to beta one in the heart. That would slow the heart down. It doesn't have to just be beta two. They show in beta two. But it could also open up the lungs and so forth. Okay. So that so here we are. Here's some drugs. And you can look at them yourself. Simple sympathomimetic, sympathomimetic drugs means it it's it simulates like ephedrine, for example. Ephedrine is one. It would be a sympathomimetic drug. Okay. Ephedrine. Okay, there are some that will, will will simulate acetylcholine. You can glance at. Okay, so we'll close here and start right there. You know, actions of auto.